Recently I had the chance to work on a short film where I had to animate a wasp trying to escape from under a glass. In today's tutorial I want to share the process I used to achieve this. So let's get started. Alright, so let's start with this fresh blender scene and first of all we want to bring in the 3D assets that we're going to use. So first we need a wasp and you can use this 3D model that I created and you can download it completely for free from my Blender Kit profile. Now in order to import it you need the Blender Kit add-on and if you don't have it or don't know how to use it I highly recommend you to watch this tutorial that I made where I demonstrate how to download and import free 3D assets with the Blender Kit add-on. Okay so let me just type in wasp and this asset should show up right here so I can zoom in because it is really small and if you play the timeline you can see that this is also already animated and has this looping animation of the wings flapping. This is really useful and in addition to that we also need a glass. So let me search for a glass and I want to use a really simple one like the one right here. So let's import it as well. So that are all the assets we need for now but I think I want to change the visibility of this class so let's go to the object properties and on the viewport display change it to wire so that we can actually see inside. Then let me rotate it 180 degrees and bring it up here so that it completely covers our wasp and we can hide it underneath. Next we also want to bring in a ground plane so press shift A and on the mesh bring in a plane then in edit mode let's scale it down a bit to make it smaller and uh, let's just duplicate it and move it up on the set axis and again in edit mode scale it down even more and this is going to be our emitter. Now here it is really important that you have a scale of 1 so if you have another scale value right here that isn't exactly 1 simply press ctrl A and apply the scale until the scale is reset to 1. So let me rename this to emitter and also select the ground plane and rename it to ground so that we keep everything organized. So for now we can disable the wasp collection as we're not going to use the wasp object itself and instead we're going to emit it as a particle from this plane right here. So we're not going to manually animate it but instead we're going to simulate it as a particle which is quickly going to give us very realistic results. So let's just go to the particle properties with this emitter selected, create a new particle system and I'm going to call it wasp and change the number from 1000 down to 1 since we only want to emit one wasp. Then also go to the render options and change it from render as halo to object and then down here select the wasp. So you can see it right here but it is really tiny so let's increase the scale to something like 0.5. And if I play the timeline, you can see that it quickly goes up and then falls down and completely disappears. So what we want is that it stays within our glass. And in order to do so, we need to turn this into a collision object. So select the glass, go to the physics properties and enable collision. Then also do the same thing for the ground so it can't escape from beneath. Enable collision. Then uh, go back to the first frame to reset the simulation and when you now play it you can see that this wasp is trapped inside. However after 50 frames it immediately disappears which is happening because we have in the particle settings this lifetime value which is currently set to 50. So let's just set this to a really high number so that our wasp never dies and just stays alive throughout the whole simulation. And you can see that currently this starts really fast and then it slows down and it also goes down to the ground because it is affected by the gravity. Now I don't think we need the gravity so let's go down to the field weight settings and just completely disable the gravity in order to get a more realistic simulation and I also think the movement is way too erratic in the beginning so let's just go to the velocity options and bring down the normal to let's say 0.2 so it isn't gonna start as fast. And whenever the simulation doesn't seem to reset, uh, I recommend you to quickly go into edit mode and back out of it and then you are sure that you will get a completely new simulation and sometimes this can resolve some issues you might face. 
Okay, so now this is working. However, I want the wasp to look like it is trying to escape. So it should bang against the glass and try to get out. So in order to control this, we can bring in a force field. So let's press shift A and under force field, simply bring in a force. Then let's move this all the way over here, bring it up a bit. Let's make it a bit smaller so we can see it better in the viewport. So in the data properties, let's bring the scale down to 0.05 or maybe even smaller, 0 0.02. So this makes our viewport a bit more organized. And currently you can see that the wasp is repelled by our force. So let's reverse this by going to the physics properties, decrease the strength to minus one. So now the wasp is trying to get towards our force objects. And I think this is already more realistic. Maybe we can make it even stronger, so minus two, so that it is really trying to get towards it. All right, so this seems to work. However, I think usually a wasp doesn't only try to get out on one side, uh, but it rather tries to get out all around the glass. So in order to do this, we can simply rotate our force field around the glass and the wasp will follow along. So in order to do this, let's bring in another empty, which is gonna be a single arrow. This is also way too big. So in the data properties, let's make it smaller so that it is just above the glass. Then select our force, shift click on the empty, control P to parent it to the object. And now I can rotate our empty along the set axis and the force field will follow along. So let's go to the first frame, set a keyframe for the set rotation. Then uh, let's go to the last frame, rotate it maybe in this direction add another keyframe and then I want to select both of those keyframes and press T to change the interpolation to linear so that we get a linear movement and now you can see that at first it tries to escape on this side and it, then it goes more to the other side wherever the force field is. However, we have another issue, which is that the wasp itself doesn't rotate. So it always points uh, towards this direction, even though it is trying to escape in this direction. So uh, luckily this is very easy to fix. So let's quickly bring back the original wasp collection and then select the armature of our wasp, go into pose mode. And in here we want to rotate this base bone. So this right here should rotate along the set axis in order to follow along with our force object. So in order to do this, make sure that you have this base bone selected, go to the bone constraints and let's add in a copy rotation constraint. Then as the target, select the empty that we just animated. And currently this flips it completely. So let's disable the X and the Y axis. And when you now scrub through the timeline, you can see that the wasp starts to follow along. So with that set up, we can exit pose mode, go back into object mode. Let's again disable this wasp collection. And when you now play it, uh, I think we can see it better from top view. You can see that the wasp is always facing towards our force object and is trying to get out in different directions. All right, so with that set up, I think we have a very realistic simulation that already looks quite good. So I think we are ready to bake it. So let's select the emitter, go to the particle properties and then down in the cache options, just bake it. This is gonna save the simulation to memory. So uh, make sure that you do this before you render it so that you won't get any issues while rendering. And next, we also want to disable this plane so that only the wasp is visible. So go to the viewport display options and disable show emitter so that it disappears in the viewport. And then also do the same thing in the render properties. So now let's take a look at this in render preview. So I'm going to switch to render preview and I actually want to use cycles to render this. And let's also quickly load in an HDRI so that we get a bit more realistic lighting. And in order to render this, I think it's also nice to enable transparency under film and then also turn on transparent glass so that we get the transparency in the glass as well. So next, let's also quickly bring in the camera. So shift a camera, 
I'm gonna place this right up here. So control alt zero to place the camera to the current view. And then maybe you wanna make the ground plane a bit bigger. And let's make this look like a table by adding a wood material. And you can use whatever material you want, but I'm gonna use my huge asset library with more than 5,000 PBR materials that I can simply drag and drop into the viewport and quickly apply to any object. I actually got this from the Blender market, so I'm gonna put the link to this in the video description if you are interested as well. Uh, so this costs just $25 and will give you access to more than 5000 PBR materials. You can also get cheaper versions for $9 or $1, which will give you access to 1000 or 2000 highly realistic PBR materials. And now before I render this, I also want to make sure that I have motion blur enabled, which is going to make it a lot more realistic since the wasp is moving very fast. And I think I'm also going to select the camera and enable depth of field. So hover over the focus distance and press E. So we can quickly use this eyedropper to set the focus distance. And now I think I had selected the table in the back. So probably uh, we need to switch the display mode back to solid. Then again, select the camera and try again. So E to set the focus distance and place it right here. And now uh, the focus is placed perfectly. However, the f-stop is way too low. So basically nothing is in focus. So let's bring this up to, let's say 16 or maybe even more, let's say 24, so that we have just a slight depth of field. So now let's quickly make a render to see what this looks like. So I think I'm gonna go down to 256 samples, increase the resolution to 200% and let's start the render. Okay, so now it looks quite blurry because of the motion blur, but it works nicely if you render it out as an animation. There is one issue that I got with this simulation. Sometimes you get a few frames where the wasp is peeking through the glass and that's not gonna look very realistic once you render this out. Now you could play around with the collision borders so that the wasp stays inside. However, I think there is also a very nice solution to quickly fix this in the render. So let's go back to render preview. And in order to fix this, I wanna make everything invisible that it's outside of the glass. So let's switch to the shader editor and let me show you how this is done. So uh, let's select the original wasp so we can edit the material. So that's the one right here. And if you go to the end next to the principal PSDF node, I wanna bring in a light path node. And if you take a look at the is transmission ray, you can see that we get a white value for everything that is inside of the glass and the black value for everything that is outside. Now we can use this by uh, mixing the principal BSDF node with a transparent BSDF node. So let's use a mix shader to combine the two and then make sure to use the is transmission ray as the factor. Currently this is inverted, so let me just uh, plug the transparent into the first input and the principal into the second one. Uh, so let's also turn this into a little node group. So press Control G to turn it into a group and then use the tab key to exit. And I'm just gonna rename this to inside glass. So now we can copy this group and also add it to the shader for the fur. Bring this in here at the end of the node tree and then also do the same thing for the wings. So paste it in here as well. And now you can see that everything that is outside of the glass gets cut off and uh, only the wasp within is visible. Now, of course, this isn't the perfect solution, but with, since we have so much motion blur, this isn't gonna be noticeable in the final render. However, just make sure that if you need the wasp outside of the glass, to make sure that you disable this node group because otherwise it's not gonna be visible. But uh, for now, let's keep it and put the glass back on top. And let's just turn off the wasp one more time, uh, place the camera however you want, and then let's start rendering the animation. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I am Nick and see you in the next one. Bye.